Namaskaram and uh, good morning to everyone here. <coughs> well, in this August audience, I don't have to uh, go about talking about all the horrific statistics we have about all the negative things that are happening with the land and soil on this planet. But as a solution, I see definitely there are many nuances to the solution uh, and the very important aspects which are not small in number or complexity. But I feel the most important thing if we want to achieve something is as we have found of all the conventions, one convention which bore positive and conclusive result was uh, the 1987 Montreal Protocol where we focused on the ozone holes and largely it was fixed because of uh, single pointed action. I think a time has come where that kind of action is needed for soil, separating soil from every other issue. Though they are significant and important, it's important that we separate soil from the other aspects because all these other aspects are relevant to our lives only as long as soil is alive. Keeping the soil alive, the simplest way to do this is because nearly 54% of the world's land is uh, under plough or farmland, another 18 to 20 percent is partially under farming. So nearly 70 percent or 71 percent of land is farmland, 4.2 percent is urban land. So essentially our problem is 71 percent is ploughed, 4.2 percent is paved. This is the essence of it. So this has done one thing that we have forgotten about, which I don't see any mention anywhere, is this has reduced the photosynthesis this process, which is a huge process of sequestering carbon and producing oxygen for this. If we, if I have to repeat this fact that before the phenomenon of photosynthesis, the average uh, oxygen content in the atmosphere was a shade over 1%. Today it is 21%, but in the last thousand years, the photosynthesis as a phenomenon has come down by 85%. So to fix this one important thing is urban lands, there is nothing much we can do. We can make it a little more greener, of course, but beyond that, there's nothing much. It's the agricultural land. Why agricultural land is most important is this is a piece of geography that human hand is tending to on a daily basis. If we can't fix this, how are we going to fix other things? People talk about rainforests, people talk about oceans. I feel if we stay out of them, rainforests and oceans are fine by themselves. It doesn't really need any fixing. The real fixing that is needed is the agricultural land and every day men and women are tending to this. What is it that we can do? I think the most important thing is to put some food there for the microorganisms which is the fundamental of all life. Putting food there means organic content should rise. On an average, if you look at it, Northern Europe has 4.8%, 1.48% as uh, organic content, Southern Europe has 1.1%, United States has 1.25-1.4%, India has 0.68%, Africa on an average has 0.3%. If you look at this across the world, not a single nation has a minimum of 3%, not even a single nation. So why can't we set this objective? All other issues are there, we can continue to attend to those things, but the most important thing is we as a generation of people keep the soil alive for future generations. First of all, to recognize soil as a living entity. In the last two years of me meeting various ag agricultural ministries across the world, I was shocked to see that more than 85 percent of the, pop, uh, of the uh, nations on the planet, more than 85 percent of the nations on the planet still look at soil as an inert substance which can be fixed by adding a chemical or taking off a chemical. If we do not change this attitude, we will not fix the soil. Setting up 3 percent as a minimum average for every nation and setting up an incentive method, uh, process for the farmers to get there, making the incentives attractive enough that farmers will aspire to be there. And once they get there, the industry and business to facilitate carbon credit systems for the farmers is a second line of incentive. What I'm seeing is we've been working with hundreds and thousands of farmers 
<laughs> we have tried very hard to get them carbon credits, but it's, I'm saying in, in spite of a very sophisticated group of people working, it's simply impossible to break that carbon credit system. I don't know what it takes. If we don't simplify this, nobody will benefit from this. Not only simplify this, instead of asking the farmer to go and get carbon credits, if he reaches 3%, whatever is that sequestration that's happening, the governments can calculate and offer that as an incentive. The third level of incentive is, instead of just labeling uh, food, products as just organic, as if the other foods are inorganic, it is not. And it's extremely difficult and it takes a whole lab process to measure the amount of fertilizer and pesticide in a given product, either a fruit or a vegetable. So the simple thing is to measure the organic content of the soil, which can be done on the land by the farmer with a little supervision, it can be done, it's a 10 to 15 minute process. So we can establish 3% organic content. Those who have reached 3% organic content, these products, these agricultural products of fruit and vegetable and grain should find a different shelf in the marketplace. If it finds a different shelf in the marketplace, there is enough science to tell us if a field contains 3% organic content, what are the micronutrients which are present in the food, what are the health benefits, what are the preventive health benefits, and what are the benefits for the nation in terms of the number of man days gained, the less stress on the healthcare system, happier, healthier and happier population in the country, what it leads to in terms of productivity and creativity all this there is enough data we just have to correlate this this three pronged incentive basis to the farmer will definitely start rolling this disaster that is unfolding in terms of soil extinction we are using this word soil extinction this if we do not reserve reverse now according to madam is here UNFAO is saying that every year 27,000 species of organisms are being lost at this rate, in another 30 to 35 years, we will reach a place we can talk as much as we want, even if we invest all that we have. We will not be able to turn it around because we would have reached that point of no return. It becomes extremely difficult or nearly impossible. But right now we have this challenge and also a privilege that we are that generation. If we act now, we can be that generation. We turn back from the brink of a disaster. I would like to see that all of us strive for this in these complex issues and complex solutions. Implement becomes a huge challenge because implementation has to happen on the land and land is not managed by scientists land is managed by farmers so it's extremely import important it must be a single point agenda incentive based agenda if inspiration incentives and disincentives after a certain period of time is the way forward this is my appeal to every one of you because I don't want this COP15 to end as one more convention with more paper and more paper. This must end with concrete action and action in such a way that it is implementable. It is implementable and we will see a distinct change in the coming few years. Thank you very much for having me here.